Databricks uh, brought out a new model that statistically, you know, from the benchmarks that are out there, looks pretty good. But is it enterprise worthy? I think there's a couple of arguments you could make. Having an enterprise company that focuses on enterprise data, building an enterprise LLM for enterprises uh, could be pretty compelling because you have a bunch of companies that are, you know, building large models trained on a lot of openly available data um, that you could argue isn't, you know, like with the, the, the GPTs and the clouds and the um, Groks and these different models that have largely been trained on sort of the open uh, internet data. Um, this one's interesting though, Pat. Uh, so I'll start off talking a little bit about its numbers, which by the way are very compelling. The numbers are very good, you know, and they did some comparative of it with the Llama model, Mixtral and Grok one. I didn't talk so much about some of the more proprietary things like the Google Gemini or open AI, um, but it focused on what mostly people are considering these open available models. Um, it's got, favorable results in three key categories. They call it programming or human eval, uh, math, as well as language understandings. Uh, and it actually outperformed in all of those categories. Now, again, I don't, don't see comparisons to some of the other, um, but from where it starts, that's pretty compelling. And it does say that in its thing that it, it, it does surpass GPT 3.5 and it's competitive with Gemini One Pro. So, they didn't note that, they just didn't show the data um, in, in any sort of comparative data because, well, not fully open source would be my guess. Um, Pat, interesting, very opaque on training data here, very opaque on where the data came from. So if you read this kind of long form, what it is and what it, what it was built, I think it said it was trained on 12 trillion tokens of text and code data. Okay, where'd it come from? Um, it said it was, um, I believe it's data that Databricks has access to, Pat, but I do have to ask like, okay, 12 trillion tokens, carefully curated data, maximum content length, 32,000 tokens. Um, is this basically being trained out of Databricks enterprise customer data in some anonymized fashion? Where else did the data come from? I can't fully pull that together. It said... It was used the full suite of Databricks tools, including Apache Spark, and Databricks Notebooks for data processing, Unify Catalog for data management, MLflow for experiment tracking, curriculum learning and pre-training. Interesting. I just, you know, like, remember the, the, the CTO of OpenAI? Like, what did you train this on? I, I, I'm just kind of curious. Like, you know, are you training this really, really good enterprise data model using a lot of enterprises data? And is there some way, some sort of use agreement that you have when you use Databricks that they're allowed to do this, so long as they do what? Type anonymize, what are they doing with the data to make this work? I imagine they're also using some of the other data that op other open source models are using, Pat. Um, I do think there's an interesting opportunity as we see this pivot from open uh, models that are being built mostly in, on the open training of da internet data to more proprietary, to create better models that are gonna be more use business use case specific, industry specific, um, I do think that's where it's going. I actually don't think it's these mega large language. I think it's going to be these big large languages coupled with very specific domain knowledge and data that is going to create useful insights. Um, Pat, I mean, look, the the investments that have been made, Databricks is probably the most exciting, one of the most exciting IPOs to be, to come. Um, this is very interesting. I do think with Databricks plus Mosaic, they have the tools and the capabilities. Um, how does this get adopted? How does this get used? Does this build popularity? I see it more as being inside the Databricks user community than being something that really drags them into this kind of broader open AI discussion. But I'll kick this over to you to see what you think. Yeah, so I'm gonna do a John Fort on the other hand here uh, style and, and, and kind of debate this with myself. So the notion of having a data management company and having a model together is compelling, okay? Uh, there's some efficiency there uh, for sure, and, and that's, that is what enterprises are looking for. But on the other hand, if you don't know where the data comes from, and if you're an enterprise and start using this model, uh, you are likely going to get uh, sued if the underlying training data 
uh, was not licensed. And, you know, you had mentioned the Sora interview with the CTO who didn't know uh, what the training data was, which I find absolutely impossible uh, scenario here. I don't and think he didn't know. Is that <laughs> right? Probably knew, but didn't want to say. And anyways, it, it was it was just, gosh, the Internet seized on that one. And the other thing is, is 75% of enterprise data is on prem. And Databricks is a data management cloud in the cloud company, in the public cloud company. So I, I guess their, their TAM is 25% of that enterprise data that's up there. And oh, by the way, where, where they uh, compete, you know, even with uh, Cloudera, who has extensions to AWS and, and GCP uh, and Azure. Uh, where they also, you know, compete with uh, with Snow Snowflake. In fact, I love to combine Snowflake and Databricks, and I've heard them referred to as as Snowbricks out there. Here is uh, kind of a middle stance, which says, let's say a company like IBM uh, integrates uh, DBRX in there, and then under uh, under NDA, uh, they provide IBM uh, the sources of data and how that data is 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 pruned and then ibm uh, would make could make the decision uh, to go in and indemnify uh, people from uh, lawsuits so uh, ibm brought mistral in that doesn't have uh, a i don't know if they um if, if they uh, legally indemnify them but that's some research that i'm actually doing now i've got an inquiry in, in uh in Tybium. if nobody indemnifies the enterprise it's a hard pass they're not going to use this folks 